QQ's watching. Those of you who've been watching anime for a while now have probably heard of a type of computer program called a visual novel. While computer software that used prose fiction to tell a story has existed since the early days of computer games, their popularity has waned somewhat in English-speaking countries for a time, as a greater focus was placed on graphical quality. But lately, the medium has gained a significant increase in popularity, in part due to its connection to Japanese animation, as many popular shows started off as visual novels originally. This rise in interest is coming at a time when the output of other mediums is starting to grow stale, with many fans of literature, comic books, and video games falling off the hype train. A big part of why visual novels, as well as other Japanese entertainment in general, has been on the rise relative to other mediums in the US is because Japan doesn't have many of the hangups that creators native to the English language do. This is a good thing. Competition is good. People are tired of being exploited for money by the entertainment industry, so they're taking their money elsewhere. It reminds me of the anime licensing scramble back in the day. Visual novels are still waiting for their metaphorical killer app, a big hit that will prove without a shadow of a doubt that there's an audience for this type of software in the West. And that may be sooner than you think. All it will take is for one title to become a breakout hit and pretty soon a lot more people will take interest in the medium. Maybe we'll even see established game companies start releasing visual novels, much like how Netflix snatched up Knights of Sidonia for their animation catalog. Now, this rise in popularity mirrors the sort that Japanese animation went through a few decades ago. Just like the early days of anime with shows like Robotech and Speed Racer and Samurai Pizza Cats, there have been a few early Japanese visual novels translated into English that went on to find underground success. And much like fan subtitled anime, fans have been translating Japanese visual novels into English for well over a decade now, with the first of such titles being Fantasy Star Adventure for the Sega Game Gear. A big part of what introduced many to the world of anime or visual novels were the companies that brought over titles to the English-speaking territories for consumers to purchase. Sure, many likely discovered those mediums from fan translation work, but just as many, if not more, probably found them either by stumbling upon Knights of Sidonia on Netflix or had a full boyfriend on GOG. But the road to our current state with regards to anime was much rockier than many newer fans are aware of. And I fear that the visual novel industry, at least in the US, might not have the foresight to avoid the pitfalls that previous companies have stumbled over. Those of us who've been watching anime for a long time likely remember a few names that are no longer heard about much these days. AD Vision, Bandai Visual USA, and Genion Universal Entertainment. The stories of what ultimately happened to these companies is a tale for another time, but much of their problems was due to incompetence. And much of this same incompetence can be seen in some visual novel publishers in the US, the worst of which comes from a little company called Sakai Project. They're probably best known for publishing most of the titles in the Sakura spirit, um franchise by Winged Cloud, but Sakai Project is also responsible for bringing many other Japanese visual novels over to the West. So a little backstory for the company. Sakai Project started out as the fan group working to translate the dramatic slice of life visual novel School Days into English, and they later partnered with JASTA for the retail release. A year and a half after the release of School Days, Sakai Project started a Kickstarter project for an English release of a Moe headphone design doujin? It was an independently released art book created by Lunatic Joker and released at the Comitia 107 event for original works. And through the power of crowdfunding backers, they managed to raise over $25,000. Now you're probably wondering why I'm bringing up this art book in a video about visual novels. Well, it's gonna show the beginning of a certain trend with this company. See, a few weeks after the Lunatic Joker Dojin Kickstarter met with its funding goals, Sakai Project announced a couple of stretch goals, and with this, they announced that they made a little financial error. Yeah, it seems that their initial estimation of $5,000 was not going to be enough to cover the printing costs. Quote, so incidentally, our initial goals were actually not high enough for what we were trying to accomplish. Also, the cost of printed shikishi were much higher than we realized. So instead of canceling the project and maybe waiting a while before starting it up again, this time with a more realistic goal, they instead let it ride with the hopes that they would be lucky enough to receive the actual amount of funding needed to print the book. But the problems with the crowdfunding project didn't end there. 
See, the project was estimated to deliver during the month of April 2014, but Sakai Project found that that was not going to be feasible due to some delays with the printers. Yeah, it seems like the earliest that one could receive the book, that they had paid so much money to help produce, was in July at the Anime Expo convention. But if one didn't have the time or the money to spare to fly all the way out to the Los Angeles Convention Center, then they had to wait until Anime Expo was long since over for Sakai Project to actually start shipping out these books. Part of the blame for this is because of technical issues with the USPS website, but the problem is that Sakai Project couldn't switch to another delivery service because of lack of funds. And while they did eventually manage to ship out the books by mid-August, because they ran over budget, that stretch goal for 8 new pages was never added to the book and instead sent out digitally. So already we have a Kickstarter project that is pretty much a financial disaster from Sakai Project. But this is certainly not the only one that the company has handled in a poor manner. Hell, before they even began delivering books to the backers at Anime Expo, Sakai Project launched two more crowdfunding projects, both for visual novels to be translated from Japanese into English. The first of these is a title called World End Economica, a trilogy of visual novels written by the creator of Spice and Wolf. Sakai Project had already brought the first visual novel in the trilogy to the West, so they went to Kickstarter to collect the funds to translate the other two. This is all while they had yet to deliver on their previous Kickstarter project, which at the time, they were already two months late on. So it's frankly baffling as to why anyone donated at all, but they did and the project managed to raise about $95,000. They also had all sorts of stretch goals, like a digital guidebook and an iOS and PS Vita port. Cause you know, the PS Vita has no games, so anyone who owns one would pay through the nose for another chance to use it. But we'll talk more about Sakai Project's involvement as a PS Vita developer a little bit later. Like their last Kickstarter, Sakai Project found that their initial delivery estimate of May 2015 was too early. The translation for episode 2 was finished on late April, but the script still needed to be edited and added to the engine itself. While the early access version of episode 2 was released in May, the final version was not on Steam until mid-July. So Sakai Project was already two months past the release date that they promised, and they had only delivered on half of the finished project. Then for a period of about two and a half months, there were no updates on the status of episode 3 until October 6th when Sakai Project announced that they had hired a new translator for the third episode. Said translator took an entire month to read through episode 1 and 2 while finishing up other projects before they even began translating episode 3. And by then, Sakai Project estimated that it would take 6 months for the visual novel to be released. Oh, and they announced this right around when they started another Kickstarter project. But we'll get to that in a little bit. On February 2nd of 2016, Sakai Project said that they were replacing the translator for Episode 3 once again, and they spent the whole month of January going over the 8% of the script that the previous translators had done. By March, Sakai had said that they weren't so confident about meeting the 6 month release date, though they still spared a moment to mention ANOTHER crowdfunding project, this time on Indiegogo. As of this video's release, it's been over 6 months since they started work on Episode 3 and they still have yet to release the final episode of World End Economica on Steam, let alone fill the physical release and the PS Vita or iOS ports. So we mentioned a couple new crowdfunding projects that Sakai had started while they were working on World End Economica. Well actually, it was more than a couple. They started 9 crowdfunding projects in the time since the World End Economica project began. One of which, Fault Milestone 1, started before they even started collecting the backers money. Of course, this project came with a bunch of stretch goals such as an Android and a PS Vita port, and of those, the only one that's been delivered on is the digital art book. Well, at least they got the actual visual novel itself out on time this time. Their next Kickstarter project is a title called WAS, The Hourglass of Lepidoptera which raised almost $60,000. Now, the interesting thing about the Hourglass of Lepidoptera is that right now, the only way to read it is to download a pirated copy, 
unless you already own it, but we'll get to why in a minute. Now, Sakai Project estimated that the Hourglass of Lepidoptera would be released in April of 2015, but they didn't even manage to get a working alpha version out to backers until mid-May. The final version wasn't released until December 15th, and that was just the digital version. They still hadn't shipped the physical goods by then. In fact, Sakai Project never actually shipped out everything that was ordered, just what they were able to print before canceling the project. Yes, in a stroke of brilliance, Sakai Project decided to cancel the Kickstarter project for the Hourglass of Lepidoptera over a year after it had met its funding. Sakai said that SRL, the group that made the visual novel, quote, engaged in stealth marketing tactics using paid reviews, which violates Steam's terms of service. How Valve found out about this, I have no fucking clue, since none of the reviewers were stupid enough to disclose this information. So we're left to assume that someone at Sakai Project discovered this themselves and decided to take action. Look, paying Steam users to leave positive reviews of a game is a really shitty thing to do. But you know what's an even bigger shitty thing to do? Pulling your game from the Steam store page so that no one can fucking play it. Sakai didn't even manage to finish all the physical orders. They just shipped out whatever they had already printed and wiped their hands of the project. Though they likely would have already met all those orders before pulling the visual novel from Steam had the project not met with so many delays. And of course, these weren't the only crowdfunding projects Sakai had running at the time. Over a month before Faith Milestone 1 even hit the Steam store page, Sakai Project launched a Kickstarter to bring Clanad, the slice of life dramedy, over to the West for official release. Never mind that the VN had already been adapted into two fantastic shows by Kyoto Animation, and that a group of fans were already hard at work creating an English patch for the title. I guess a less popular and less well-loved story than Clan Ads wouldn't have initially raised over $500,000! Holy shit! Now the digital release of the visual novel took a month longer than expected, but that's to be expected with a company as incompetent as Sakai Project, though it took them almost two months to prepare an update to fix the script issues that were present in the initial release. After Clan Ed's digital release on the Steam platform, Sakai Project announced that, quote, everything will be shipping in Q1 in two batches, end quote. One for the main title, and another for the anthology, manga, and side stories visual novel. That would mean that if all went according to plan, that the physical release of Clan Ad would only be late by four months at the least. But of course, things did not go entirely according to plan. On March 9th, Sakai shipped out only 2,850 orders, the orders destined for the US. Yes, it seems that the staff at Sakai Project is in need of a lesson in geography. At that point, they decided to transfer all the remaining physical rewards to a warehouse in the UK, though obviously not to save on shipping time, as Quote, the time to do this is about the same as if we shipped each individual order directly from the US, end quote. So clearly some other reason was involved in making this decision. Three days after this announcement, Sakai said that there was a problem with the shipments to Australia because someone didn't know the difference between Australia and Antarctica. You gotta be fucking kidding. So they decided to ship the AU orders to a warehouse in Sydney during mid-April. By late May, Sakai found that, quote, the process of clearing a shipment in Australia is much more complicated than it is in the EU, end quote. Around this same time, they had formed a list of lost and damaged orders that needed to be replaced. On June 1st, Sakai Project announced that, quote, the Australia and EU shipments are being prepared to leave the warehouse, end quote. So it wasn't until 19 months after the Clan Ed Kickstarter project began that all the backers received their physical copies of the visual novel. Though that's assuming that nothing goes wrong with any of the shipments to delay the project even further. And of course, this being Sakai Project, they started another crowdfunding project a month after launching the one for Clan Ad. The Grisaya Trilogy Kickstarter was launched on December 17th, 2014, and managed to raise over $475,000. Not long after that, they reached the stretch goals of bringing over the Magical Girl spin-off title to be released after the trilogy, and porting the series over to the PS Vita, even though the version they were bringing over came from the Vita port, but never mind that. But then Sakai Project discovered a bit of an issue with some of the higher backer tiers. Yes, it seems Kickstarter wasn't too fond of them using their service to sell bed sheets and body pillows covered with images of anime girls in various states of undress. They tried to appeal the decision, but in the end Sakai had to swap out those backer tiers with something else, 
all of which could have been avoided had someone taken the time to actually read Kickstarter's rules before starting the project. In late February of 2015, Sakai said that they would not be able to offer the 18 plus version of the Grisaia trilogy for the physical release to be delivered to backers, but that they would discuss the possibility of a future release with Frontwing, the VN's original creators. You know, the version that didn't have certain parts of the story censored by Sony so that it could be sold to those not legally old enough to purchase the original version. On May 30th, 2015, the first title of the trilogy, The Fruit of Grisaia, launched on the Steam platform, with the unrated version launching on the Denpasoft digital distribution platform three months later in late August. Oh, and keep in mind that the original estimated release for the entire trilogy was October of 2015, but we should be well acquainted with Sakai Project's ability to meet deadlines by now. Now, remember that Magical Girl spin-off duology that I mentioned before? Yeah, it seems that instead of waiting for all three parts of the Grisaia trilogy to be released like they had initially promised, Sakai decided to prioritize the translation of Idol Magical Girl Chiru Chiru Michiru over parts 2 and 3 of the trilogy. Both parts of the spin-off duology were released on July 29th of 2015, three months before Sakai had originally estimated that the original trilogy would be released. So with it now obvious that they weren't going to complete the trilogy by their original estimation, Sakai announced that the second part of the series would be complete in late November, though there would still be, quote, technical editing QA work required after that, end quote. So they didn't even have a firm release date at the time. Well, the translation for part two of the series was finished by March 1st of 2016, four months after they had initially estimated, though a number of technical issues with porting the PS Vita version to PC caused further delays and the VN still not out yet as of the time of this video's release. PS Vita? Ah, yes. See, the Vita port had a number of extras not found in the original release, so Sakai Project decided to port it to PC. But when it came time to port this PC port of a PlayStation Vita title back to the PS Vita, Sakai Project ran into a little trouble. It wasn't until February 7th of 2015 that Sakai became an official publisher on Sony's PSN platform. After that, they barely mentioned anything about the PS Vita versions of the Grisaia series, until October 6, 2015 when they published a big update full of excuses and narrative spinning about the unforeseen difficulties they faced in getting their products onto the PSN store. Then, on January 24th of 2016, Sakai said that they were, quote, currently getting a submission build for Sony to evaluate before we can get the final approval to release The Fruit of Grisaia on PS Vita. And of course, in that same post, they happen to mention that they've got another Kickstarter project going, with a PS Vita port as one of the stretch goals for that as well. Since then, Sakai Project has yet to actually publish anything on Sony's PSN store and they've said barely anything about their progress or lack thereof on that front. It's obvious at this point that Sakai Project had no idea what they were getting themselves into when they offered PS Vita ports. It wouldn't be surprising to find that the only reason why those PS Vita ports were offered at all was just to have more stretch goals to get more money from backers. There is no excuse for them to continue to offer handheld ports as stretch goals when they've never delivered on any one of them before. I mean, hell, Sakai Project shouldn't even be launching new crowdfunding projects while they still have yet to complete all the ones they previously started. But on October 26th of 2015, Sakai launched another Kickstarter, this time to produce an anthology of side stories for the Narcissu duology. The project had an estimated delivery date of April 2016, and as you can guess already, they missed that one too. As of this video release, only the new epilogue and A Little Iris side story have been released, but you can always buy the $30 DLC season pass to have these side stories you've never read as soon as they come out, even though you could just buy them individually the same day anyway. The Narcissu 10th Anniversary Anthology Project launched on Steam on January 27th, 2016, with A Little Iris DLC released on April 18th. The same month Sakai said that the whole project would be finished, and obviously they have yet to ship the physical copies as you cannot ship that which does not yet exist. Sakai Project has had a few other crowdfunding projects since then. There's the Kickstarter for Root Double, which came out so soon after it was funded that many are suspecting that Sakai already had Limnissa translating the title, and that the whole Kickstarter was just so that they wouldn't have to pay the licensing fees out of pocket. The rest of Sakai's crowdfunding projects have yet to pass the estimated delivery dates, so it's currently unknown how late those projects will be, but I wouldn't hold my breath for their quick release. 
for a few of their more financially successful campaigns, the original Japanese developer sent them a message to be translated into English, and these messages were always really polite and respectful. There was a feeling of love and awe behind them, like the Japanese devs were amazed that something they created was able to find a passionate audience overseas, outside of their home country. Contrast that with the way Sakai Project themselves handled announcements and updates, and a very different picture is painted. Unlike that of the original devs who created these titles, Sakai comes off as sounding immature, like they'd learned to write from reading Tumblr blog posts. The respect and admiration that the original Japanese developers showed just wasn't there, instead replaced with empty promises and endless apologies for their many screw-ups. This whole thing isn't just a company being a little late on a few deadlines, they clearly have no idea what they're doing, given the incompetence shown with their previous adventures in crowdfunding. It wouldn't be surprising to find that they're bleeding money, and that all these Kickstarters are the only thing keeping them afloat, and there's no excuse for it. At this point, Sakai Project has long since proven that they cannot be trusted with crowdfunding money. So why keep giving them any? There are plenty of other options available that English-speaking fans of visual novels could explore instead. If there's a Japanese visual novel that you really want to read, instead of paying Sakai Project, why not commission someone to translate it for you and cut out the middleman? Or better yet, you could learn Japanese and translate it yourself and learn a valuable skill. For that matter, plenty of Japanese creators have brought their games and stories to the West themselves. All one would need to do so is someone to help overcome the language barrier and research the market. This would also grant them most of the profits the product earned, since they wouldn't have to pay any of the middlemen. But most importantly, if we don't want to see another corporate disaster like what happened with Jetion, we need to vote with our wallets and stop giving our money to incompetent companies who have a history of screwing things up. Only we, as consumers, can fix this problem. So stop giving Sakai Project your money. If they want to keep bringing visual novels to the West, then they can try and do so without us donating to their Kickstarter charity causes. Oh! <laughs>